The recent leaks about the RX 470 Sapphire Platinum Edition card turned out to be mostly correct. That is what this is right here. This is the 470 available as of today. It's a $180 card that we're reviewing in this video. The price point plants it $20 cheaper than the 4 gigabyte RX 480 or $60 cheaper than the 8 gigabyte model of the 480. 70 cheaper than the GTX 1060 partner model cards, some of them anyway, looking at you, Asus. And the card is targeted at 1080p gaming with ultra settings hitting hopefully 60 FPS from what AMD's marketing text has promised. And these RX 470 and RX 460 are partner only cards, so you won't find reference models of these on the shelves. That means that pricing, clock rate, and coolers will vary partner to partner as one might expect. The model that we have is running what is effectively a reference RX 480 cooler, just with a new color for Sapphire's Platinum line. Here's a look at the specs table for the RX 470, which we published initially in our RX 480 review and have updated. The RX 470 is a cut down version of what we saw at the 480's Ellesmere chip, still running 5.7 billion transistors, but now on 32 CUs instead of the 480's 36 CUs. And that lands the RX 470 at 2048 stream processors, down from 2304 on the RX 480. The RX 470 has a recommended clock rate range of 926 megahertz core and 1206 megahertz boost. We observed the Sapphire Platinum card boosting maximally to about 1215 megahertz and the GPU runs 128 TMUs and 32 ROPs, which sheds light on the decision to limit the card to four gigabytes, an eight gigabyte model would likely become limited elsewhere in the pipe before memory. The memory subsystem of the RX 470 is mostly the same as the RX 480, including memory compression and low level technology, but the memory itself is of a lower spec. So the color compression is all there, DCC, all of that's there, but the RX 470 is running an actual memory clock of 1750 megahertz for the model we have with the whole RX 470 range spanning 6.6 .6 gigabits per second to 7 gigabits per second, so we're not hitting that 8 mark that the 480 hits. The card is still on a 256-bit memory interface and uses GDDR5 with a bandwidth of 211 gigabytes per second. As for TDP, the RX 470 is targeting a 120-watt TDP, which, just as a reminder, isn't the actual card power draw in terms of watts. It is actually more of a measurement of the thermal requirement for the card, for the GPU. So you can't look at this 120-watt TDP and go, okay, that's comparable to NVIDIA's whatever cards might be 120 watt TDP. It doesn't really work that way. So just a reminder there. So 120 watt TDP, it's a 10 watt climb from what was initially unveiled in May at the press event for Polaris. And for more information on the architecture itself, you can check our article link in the description below or just view our RX 4D review where we break down the whole thing with more depth. In terms of this card here, the design is pretty simple. So there's a back plate from Sapphire and that's been added to effectively again a reference cooler for the RX 480. The reference cooler when we tore it down has a very simple and cheap aluminum heat sink inside of it, just aluminum fins with a copper cold plate, no vapor chambers or copper heat pipes or anything like that. So very simple cooling technology on this particular model. Let's get to the testing. You can see the bench we use on the screen now and we're starting with thermals which are more important than probably often thought. And then we'll move on to power and FPS testing. Check the article link in the description below for our full testing methodology and additional charts not found here. With thermals, Sapphire's RX 470 Platinum Edition isn't that impressive given that it's using a reference RX 480 heatsink. The card operates at 50.3 Celsius Delta T over ambient and 7.59 idle, a fair bit reduced from the RX 480 reference as a result of the lower TDP GPU. The reference 480, just as a note, sits at 56.3 Celsius load. And here's a look at the chart as plotted against time. It's the same data, but presented in a way that shows the ramp up as our in-house automation kicks in. Switching over to some more unique endurance charts, we see a better look at real world performance with frequency versus temperature plotted against a two hour burn in at the bottom. The RX 470 exhibits almost identical endurance performance to the RX 480 reference card. We're seeing fluctuating frequency as a means to restrict the temperature to a 77 Celsius ceiling. Each time temperature hits 78 Celsius on the GPU diode, the clock rate is throttled until the clock returns to a 76 to 77 Celsius value. And that's what's producing this choppiness. Because the fluctuations are never more than 100 megahertz, the impact of gameplay is mostly undetectable by the user, but 1% lows and 0.1% lows will occasionally be improved by different cooling solutions depending on what card you're using. And we just saw that with the MSI RX 480 Gaming X and the hybrid 480 that we built ourselves. 
And here's a look at a similar chart, but with the fan RPM percentage plotted. The fan sticks around 46% in its out-of-box configuration, making for a tolerable mix of noise and performance on this card. And also note that the blower fan of the RX 470 Platinum Edition maxes out closer to 4,000 RPM rather than hitting the 5,200 RPM of the RX 480 reference card. This next chart is a measurement of apparent power draw in volt amps. Note that this is a measurement of total system power draw, not individual card draw. So we're mostly comparing deltas here. With the RX 470 in the test bench, we see about a 222 volt amp draw load and about 80 volt amps idle. The RX 480 version of the bench sits at around 240 volt amps load. And for reference, the GTX 1060 is about 220 volt amps just below the RX 470. Let's move on to FPS testing again. Full methodology linked in the description below. We used the new, as of today, unreleased drivers for the RX 470. They are 16.8.1 drivers. So that's what was used for testing. We did not have the same crashing issues and instability that we saw in 16.7.3 on 16.8.1, so these were stable for testing. Starting with GTA 5, GTA 5 performs at 77 FPS average on the RX 470 when run at 1080p with very high and ultra settings, effectively maxed out in the graphics tab with no advanced graphics options enabled. The RX 480 runs at 85 FPS average for the 8 gigabyte model, or a difference of 10.2% between it and the 470. Low frame rates are acceptable between both cards now that AMD has resolved GTA stuttering with its driver update. And the GTX 1060 FE runs at 95 FPS average, a percent difference of 20.9% with the RX 470. The GTX 970 SSC, the EVGA super super clocked model, places ahead of the RX 470 at 89 FPS average. Just for point of reference, the RX 470 was pushing 53.7 FPS average at 1440p, more or less playable in GTA 5 though its 0.1% low metrics were at 31 FPS and 36.3 for the 1% lows. Black Ops 3 is optimized well for its level of visual fidelity and also generally posts results that are favorable toward AMD. This reinforces the fact that graphics cards are very development dependent when it comes to extracting performance. At 1080p, the RX 470 is capable of hitting 116 FPS average, retaining fairly tightly timed 1% low and 0.1% low values at 94 and 85.7 FPS respectively. That places the RX 470 above the pre-overclocked GTX 970 SSC by a couple frames and just under the GTX 1060 Founders Edition card. The RX 480 reference card performs at 132 FPS average with the MSI variant at 144 average. So Black Ops 3 proves to be somewhat clock sensitive with these cards depending on the settings and that's shown with AIB partner models against the reference cards. Because performance in Black Ops 3 is optimized for high graphics, we decided to test 1440p playability on the RX 470, and the card pushes a high average of 71.3 FPS, and that's about even with the GTX 970 SSC and not far from the 1060 FE, but falls on its 1% and 0.1% low values. This is precisely why we measure those 0.1% numbers. If you were to simply take the average, the fact that the game stutters to a point of being mostly unplayable, especially in multiplayer, would be entirely overlooked because the average just smooths out these values. Watch our what are 1% and 0.1% lows video for more on this testing methodology. Doom recently received its anticipated Vulcan patch touted at both the recent NVIDIA and AMD press conferences, and we've been working on building up a new test database with that game. Our original launch tests for Doom are not comparable to these results, as the game optimization and drivers have changed substantially. Note that we're also hoping to revisit Doom Vulcan testing with exploration of additional settings within the game, like TSSAA, but we're still working through the other content first. Let's start with OpenGL only tests. With OpenGL and the game at 1080p ultra settings, we're seeing a performance output of 75.7 FPS average on the RX 470, and that's with sustaining lows of 58 and 55 FPS. The RX 480 runs at 85 FPS average, a difference of 11.6% between the 470 and the 480, and the two cards have comparable lows between them. With the same settings, the GTX 1060 FE card performs at 98.3 FPS average, a difference of 26% between the 1060 FE and the RX 470. That changes with Vulkan enabled. The RX 470 now operates at 98.7 FPS average, effectively tied with the GTX 1060 and a few FPS behind the 1060 Gaming X. The RX 480 runs a little more than 10 FPS faster than the RX 470, 
and ahead of the 1060 Gaming X in terms of average frame rate output. Here's 1440p with OpenGL and Doom. We're seeing a 50.7 FPS output on the RX 470, and the RX 488GB card is at 57 FPS average. The GTX 1060 Founders Edition is at 66 FPS average, and when we switch over to Vulkan, the performance swings the RX 470 to 64.8 average, and that's a difference of 24.4% compared to the RX 480. The GTX 1060 FE, for reference, is now at lower, slightly lower positioning in the hierarchy, just below the RX 470 with its 63 FPS average. Mirror's Edge Catalyst at 1080p Ultra has the RX 470 exceeding 60 FPS average, delivering on AMD's marketing claims and promises with a 65.3 FPS output. Against the RX 480 8GB reference card, there's a difference of nearly 13%, and still, both cards have issues with 0.1% low frame times, landing around 30 FPS, and the GTX 960 SSC runs slightly faster in 0.1% lows, but an overall lower average. The GTX 1060, for comparison, sits at 82 FPS average and 56.7 0.1% lows, but is obviously more expensive than the RX 470 by quite a bit. 1440p posts similar results with the RX 470 struggling to sustain a playable frame rate, and the 0.1% lows are below 20 FPS, producing noticeable choppiness and stutters during gameplay and making it for an overall unplayable experience. But again, the card was built for 1080p, not for 1440p. Moving on to overclocking, the process of overclocking the RX 470 is effectively identical to what we showed in our How to Overclock the RX 480 guide. Polaris hasn't changed, of course, between the two cards. So really it's the same Wattman stepping process that we showed previously. The RX 470, we ran into OC limitations pretty early in the process as shown by this stepping chart that's on the screen now. We settled with an OC of 1250 megahertz core and 1800 megahertz on the memory, which is the limitation in Wattman. That's the maximum amount we could push this memory. We were able to dial voltage back to 1160 millivolts and produced a peak GPU power draw of 164 watts compared to the stock clock's 110 watt GPU power draw. And that's a fairly big jump but one that is expected with the extra 50% power target. And note, when I say GPU power draw here, I mean as drawn and shown by Tech Power Up by the GPU specifically. That does not include other board components like memory. Here's a look at some of the frame rate changes with that OC applied. As usual, we're seeing a couple percentage points swing in most games with more clock sensitive titles exhibiting obviously more change. Still, the RX 470 didn't OC that far, 1250 megahertz from a gaming clock rate of 1215 megahertz measured and that's, it's really just not a big gain that we get out of the overclocking process. It is more stable though at 1250 MHz fixed as opposed to the boost variability of the stock setup. The RX 470's MSRP is $180 from AMD, but we don't know what the partner cards will be priced at just yet. If we receive those prices before this video is uploaded, but during post or something, we'll put it in a title card. But otherwise, check the link in the description below for the article. I'll detail that as soon as we have partner card pricing. But the MSRP target is $180, and that's what we're gonna go off of here. At $180, you're running 20 less than the four gigabyte model of the RX 480, and we're getting about a 10% difference, not percent change, percent difference between performance of the 480 four gigabyte card and the 470 four gigabyte card. If you wanna look specifically at the differences between four and eight gigabytes on the RX 480, check our video for that on the channel. It's relevant in some cases, but not all. It just it depends on what games you're playing, how VRAM intensive they are, and things like that. If you wanted to push 1440p, it might be worth looking at the 480, even the 4 gigabyte model, though, again, kind of pushy towards the 8 gigabyte one, or the 1060 cheaper AIB partner cards at 6 gigabytes. But if you're really trying 1440p, the 4 gigabyte RX 480 will get you a couple extra frames, and that is kind of a make or break in a few specific cases but otherwise it's, uh, this card for the most part is a better value. GTA 5 at 1080p, it showed about a 10% difference. The same is true for Mirror's Edge Catalyst, same is true again for Black Ops 3. And when we did push 1440p, we sometimes see serious detriment for the 470 in its 1% and 0.1% low frame times, specifically the 0.1% low frame times though with Black Ops, if you go look at that chart. But that's only in some titles. The RX 470 presently faces no competition in its price bracket assuming it can indeed be had for $180. And for 1080p gaming, if you're considering the 480 4 gigabyte, we'd suggest that you go 470 4 gigabyte or 480 8 gigabyte. 
instead, or of course the GTX 1060 and skip the four gigabyte 480 almost entirely. As for Sapphire's Platinum Edition of the card, so-called Platinum Edition, I'm really not big on the heatsink. This is the same cooler that shipped on the Reference RX 480, so we'd advise, as we did then, against the purchase of this card. The heatsink is about as cheap as it gets, and thermal thresholds trigger around 78 Celsius, frequently achieved, and that results in spurious frequency output when you plot it against time. MSI, Asus, XFX, everyone else, Sapphire even, have other 470 cards, but we haven't yet received them, though we do have a few on the way. So the 470 Platinum Edition, all it is, it's a reference 480 cooler, painted silver with the same cooling components inside of it. As a platform, the RX 470 is one of the best price to performance cards available on the market today if you're looking at the sub $200 price point. And that's really mostly because it has no competition. So looking at last gen, which most of the current cards in this price point are at this point, you have the 380X, which this handily outperforms in most cases and does outperform in all cases. And you also have the GTX 960 four gigabyte and two gigabyte cards. Even against the SSC four gigabyte 960, this one is a faster option, the RX 470, of course. And for NVIDIA, there's no current gen stuff that's in this price bracket yet. Obviously that will change because these, this is still an evolving market. We're not considering the used market. That's up to you to consider. If you want to look at that, it's, it's too volatile for review purposes, but that's certainly an option as well, but not one I generally recommend. So that really just leaves the RX 470 as the main option in this price point, other than AMD's own competition, which would be the four gigabyte RX 480. And that card at this point, knowing the price of this one is just really oddly positioned. You're kind of in a GTX 950 scenario where it just doesn't quite fit at its launch price. So we would be looking at for cards that you should consider in the sort of current 180 to 250 ish dollar price range. You'd be looking at a 470 if you're trying to save some money, you're just playing 1080p or a 488 gigabyte card or a 1060 6 gigabyte card, which is the only one by the way. Uh, so those would be the three options I would steer you toward if you're trying to spend that amount of money. We've done reviews of all of them. They're the three only real options right now. You can read all the reviews or just look through the charts, make the decision yourself, all the numbers are there. Uh, Patreon link in the post the video, as always, if you wanna help us out directly, link in the description below for more information. Thank you for watching, subscribe for the next video on the 460, and I'll see you all next time. Take one. Today we're reviewing the RX 470. This is a new video card that's silver. Thanks for watching. If you dislike this video, you know what to do. If you like this video, hit that like button. We also have these shirts available for just $20.